Hello team, Dave Domenic, training manager here at Amplify Surgical. This video will show how to successfully conduct a dual X demo. The first thing to know when conducting a demo is how the implant, the dual X implant actually works. The dual X implant expands in two directions, laterally first, then vertically. Each implant starts out at 12 millimeters wide and expands to 21 millimeters wide. It starts out at 40 millimeters long and when expanded is 25 millimeters long. Be sure to highlight the dual X footprint. It's pedicle to pedicle fill, basically an A-lift footprint via a posterior approach. The way the implant works is that we cannot stop at any given point. We have to get to the terminal height of any given implant. So if a, an implant says eight to 10, I need to know that I have 10 millimeters of height. The draw bar will draw the nose back and these sleds will slide up and down these ramps and then eventually fall into these little recesses or detents. That will provide passive lock in order to get a lockout screw across for the permanent lock. So we have to get to that height. So now let's go over loading the X handle with the implant. The first step is to put the inner tube into the outer tube and then load it onto the X handle itself with the click of the tabs. Once you've determined the height requirements of the implant, you go ahead and select it. When it's sterile, it comes in a package like this, a pouch. I want you to have the scrub tech fold back the blue pouch and expose the tail of the implant. Loading it is pretty straightforward. Put this up against your belly. You load the implant where there's no space between the implant and the outer tube and you tighten this gray thumb wheel until it's finger tight. And then you can take the sheath off or leave it on, doesn't matter, but for demo purposes, I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna have you turn the implant upside down. Don't rest it on anything because that will expand the implant. We don't wanna do that. We wanna take the draw bar and we wanna drop the draw bar straight into the handle. This requires two distinct steps. The first one is to turn the draw bar with no pressure, just the gravity that you're using there. Finger tight. The second step is to plunge the draw bar down and turn till it's tight. Again, snug, not tight. You'll notice that the implant goes on a little bit floppy. That's what the handle is designed to do with the pin. We pull the pin, we hold the counter torque portion of the handle, and we turn the expansion portion of the handle counterclockwise, and that draws everything together and collapses the implant in order to hand to the surgeon and is ready for implantation. Once the implant is selected and loaded onto the handle, it's important to note that the end plates of the implant correspond to the same orientation as the thumb wheel of the handle. That is where the counter torque is going to be mounted and now the counter torque handle is in line with the end plates of the implant and with the disc space. It's important to note that there are two sections of the handle, if you will. This section controls the rotation of the implant. This section controls the expansion of the implant. It's important to show the surgeon that the draw bar is laser marked with the status of the implant in the disc space. For example, the laser marks here say collapsed. Once I start expanding the implant, you'll see that the lateral line is shown. That means I've, I've completed lateral expansion and then I can continue on through vertical expansion. Be sure to impress upon the surgeon that we want to expand so we see a little bit of silver below that thick black vertical line. This ensures that the implant will be fully expanded in order to accept the lockout screw. The next step is to remove the draw bar by turning counterclockwise on the knurled handle. It'll pop up and stall 
take a half a turn counterclockwise on the handle to release the pressure on the drawbar and then remove it. It's important to keep the implant on a hard surface or keep it expanded. Otherwise, it'll appear to uh, be floppy. In, in a clinical setting, that won't happen, but in a demo, we wanna make sure that it appears very rigid. The next step is to remove the handle. You can do so by pushing on these two silver tabs on the handle and taking it straight off. Now it's time for graft delivery. Put the funnel on the inner tube and put bone graft and deploy it while this tube is still attached to the implant. Take the path clearing tool and just make sure that our tube assembly is collinear with the implant and the threads of the nose. If not, the laser mark will stop short of the shoulder. Toggle the tube assembly until you're collinear. The dual X implant is ready for the lockout screw. Once the lockout screw engages the opposite nose, keep an eye on this laser mark and watch it track down to the shoulder of the tube. Once it gets there, the lockout screw torques out and then can be removed. Now you have an expanded implant with a lockout screw still attached to the tube. The funnel can be used as a wrench to remove the tube assembly. Just turn counterclockwise on the inner tube and both tubes come out. Now you have a deployed implant in the disc space with the lockout screw. The other method of bone grafting is to do so after the screw is delivered. The graft delivery tube with nozzle is designed to fit right in a recess above or below the lockout screw. Something flowable can be put into this tube and the tube sits in a recess just above and or below the screw and is delivered with the graft tamp. About five cc's of graft fits into one of these tubes. 